So, thanks again for having me here in, uh, in Houston. And um, look forward to, to working with everybody. Uh, just a little bit about how I got involved in, in biofeedback. I uh, was introduced to biofeedback when I was in high school. Um, a man named Adam Crane came to my high school and he had these wooden boxes that had analog meters on them. And he was demonstrating biofeedback to my class. He put sensors on our hands and asked us questions about like, you know, your girlfriend or something like that. And you see the needle go up and they're like, whoa, you know. So it was interesting to me. I was always interested in technology kinds of things and science. Uh, so it was like a perfect match of, of um, something technology based that could show changes based on what you were thinking. So that, that was my introduction to uh, biofeedback. I ended up working with him for over 20 years and then he sold me his uh, company, which was a, a company that sells, it sells equipment and also does training programs. So the first question I always get is what is biofeedback? But basically I'll say it's uh, where we use instruments that measure how your body reacts to stress. And we measure things like muscle tension and heart rate and brainwave activity. So this is the, the way the equipment used to look when I first started in biofeedback. So each one of these boxes measured one thing. So if you wanted to measure muscle tension, you had one, temperature, another one, and so on. So you hook this poor guy up to all this stuff and then tell him to relax. <laughs> so, and, but it, amazingly, it worked. <laughs> but uh, I mean, this is a lot to have one person hooked up to, but I think they were just demonstrating. Um, but now we actually have, um, you know, with newer technology, things are much smaller. So you have one instrument like this. This is actually the same one in the picture there, that will replace eight of those big boxes. Oh, okay. oh really? Right. This is the one you have. <laughs> that, that one there? No. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, like she was saying, you you know, besides the um, it being smaller, you you have the data collection. You can instead of having this instrument like like here, if we go back here. You had like an instrument like this, and if it just has a meter like that, you don't have any data afterwards. You would have to try to take notes during the session while you're trying to teach the person to relax. And I mean, it worked, but it's a lot better now with the new technology. And you can keep track of everything, have your reports, trend reports, and things like that. So it's, it's a lot better. So we'll get into the, the different instruments now. So you have um, two different sort of categories of biofeedback. You've got peripheral biofeedback and you have neurofeedback. So we'll get into the peripheral biofeedback first. And that's really, if you think about everything besides the brain, okay? So it's more the, the autonomic nervous system that we're looking at. So you have, and, and um, voluntary. So you have EMG or electromyograph, that's measuring muscle activity. Then you have uh, skin temperature, that's measuring the surface temperature of your skin. And that's, kind of, that's also what these cards are based on, is, is skin temperature. Then you have skin conductance, which measures changes in how much sweat there is on your skin. Uh, so if you're more stressed or anxious or you're reacting to something, you're going to tend to have more sweat on your skin. It doesn't have to be enough for you to feel it, but the instrument is able to detect it. So the more sweat you have, the higher the, the reading would be. And the more calm and relaxed you are, then the lower. Then you have heart rate and something called heart rate variability. So variability has to do with the changes in the heart rate. And you have respiration, like what I was talking about, to measure the, the breathing. OK, so now we're going to look at uh, the next one is skin temperature. And we talked a little bit about what skin temperature is doing. It can be measuring the temperature of your hand or your foot. And it's showing changes in peripheral blood flow. And the autonomic system used to be thought of as something that we didn't have any control over, like being able to change your hand temperature or how much sweat is on your hands or your heart rate. But since uh, later on, they, they realized that people could learn how to change these things. So, Sympathetic activation is causing constriction, so your temperature would go down. Parasympathetic is the opposite. Blood vessels would dilate and the temperature goes up. So some of the things it would be used for would include migraine headaches. Raynaud's, that's where you know, people's hands are like really cold and they start to turn color sometimes. Hypertension, and you think about hypertension where if the blood vessels are constricted, it's gonna take more pressure to get the blood through. 
so we can open up the blood vessels, it, it would help. Asthma, and uh, with temperature, we don't have to do the skin prep with the alcohol pad. We just tape using either paper or cloth tape the uh, sensor to the finger, and we would have the person do relaxation, and uh, the goal would be to increase the hand temperature. The question. Yes. Let's say you have a client and we want to assume that it does have an effect, like I've always been anemic, so mm -hmm. I know that my hands are generally be a little colder than maybe mm -hmm. someone else. So how does that type of, you know, stuff affect the testing or? Well, if there's medical conditions or medications or other substances, like for instance, um, if, if a person smokes, the nicotine will constrict blood vessels certain medications, um, caffeine, um, they will, will also constrict the blood vessels. So we wouldn't, it, it's not that it won't work, it may just be a little more difficult. So if our, my normal goal for somebody, let's say would be 94 degrees, if I know someone has some sort of condition or, or is, is a you know, coffee drinker or something, uh, and they had coffee recently, then maybe instead of having that goal, I might have it maybe a couple of degrees lower. So we still want to see the change in that direction, but it may just not be as, as high. Yes. Is there um, a preset baseline for all of the tests that you're doing? Like is there um, a baseline that you, a number that you would want to see in the EEG and the number that you would want to see in the Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, there would be baselines for, for most of the things. Sometimes we use the person's own readings as their baseline because, let's say for instance, 94 degrees would normally be what we would be aiming for for temperature. But if I've got somebody starting at 70 degrees, I don't even tell them about 94 yet because it's so far away. So I might just say, I want to see if you can get five degrees today, you know, rather than, you know, giving them something where they're going to say, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, you know. So you, you would adjust the, the goals to, to where the person is. <laughs> now, this is the picture we want. <laughs> <laughs> Your breath kind of <laughs> We're just going to take this on your finger here. I'm going to place this on his uh, finger. Now, you right hand or left hand? Okay, so I'm going to use your left hand. So we're just going to have turn his hand over, and I'm just going to place it right here on his finger. So that's the sensor without the pad? Mm -hmm. The sensor without the pad? Right. Yeah, this is just being taped right on his finger. So you can just hold your hand up so they can see. Okay. Oh, where it goes in here? Well, it's going into F. F. Okay. I'm sorry, E. E. But I'll show you how to tell where, where it goes. Okay, that's the one. Oh, that's the guy. That's easy. All right. So now we're going to start this. And so now this is showing his hand temperature. So. Are we going to ask him anything? About his girlfriend. <laughs> 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 he got hooked up. We got brother. That was a good one, Doctor. That was a good one. So he's actually doing pretty good. I got a young cousin. So he has a lot of things. All right. So, so his, temp, his hand temperature is about 89 degrees there, going on 90, and down. You see, there's a little drop off there. So what I was just thinking about. It. You know, temperature, and it, what's the internal temperature, anybody? Well, mine is what's it supposed to be? 98.6 is what people 98.6, right? But it's, it's not always exactly 98.6, 98 right? So it fluctuates, and the hand temperature is going to fluctuate, too. But I was just thinking about how, you know, I don't know, what the, what's the temperature outside today? It was pretty hot, right? And it's amazing to me, you know, that our bodies can be that hot, you know. And to get, you know, if it, like in New York, you know, we have to have heat and you got to burn gas or oil or something, you know, to be able to get the temperature even to be 70 degrees inside the house, you know, um, where our body just from eating or whatever, you know, and God, you know, we can have our, our temperature hot, hotter than it is outside. It's pretty amazing. But it can be regulated by, you know, the blood vessels tightening or, or, or not. So usually when you're more relaxed, the temperature is going to be uh, warmer. And then if you get stressed, then the temperature might go down. So let's see what we can do with him. Um, how about, you know, cereal sevens? Cereal sevens? 
Yeah, have you heard of that before? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a number, and you're going to subtract 7, and just continue subtracting 7, and just say the answers out loud. So we'll start. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not going to do this one. So. <laughs> We're the subject, right? I'm with you on that one. So, all right, so, so who's good at math? Who's good at math? Anybody? All right, so we're going to start. I have a calculator. Let's start at, at 300, all right? So go ahead. Okay, and. Minus seven. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 you try to think. Two ninety uh, six. Two eighty six. Two eighty six. All right. And continue. Uh, two seventy uh, nine. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, two seventy two. Right. Uh, two sixty. Two sixty five. No. Right? Is that right? Uh -huh. Okay, see, it was better you than me, right? <laughs> right? Okay. 258. Uh-huh. Uh, 251. Uh-huh. 243. Uh -huh. No, 2.4. Uh-huh. Uh, 230. 6, 30. 6, 7. 30. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. 6, 7. You're a good so, so, But you can see you can see just from that, you know, the temperature is going down, right? right. So you could imagine and you know, and this is of course, you know, you're on the spot in front of everybody and all that. But that's the point, you know. Well that's the you know, and, and this is just an example of other stuff that could happen during your day. Like you did a presentation today, right? And you did you did post the session yesterday, right? So in those times you might have had the same kind of reaction just from you know being a little nervous or, or being on the spot and having to perform in front of people, you know, and so the body reacts. So we were at about 90 degrees, right, or 91. Now we're at 87 point something. So you had a measurable change in the temperature. It's not something that we would normally think of happening, but this is one of several things that could have happened. So if we were looking at your heart rate, that probably would have gone up. Right? <laughs> the breathing might have been different, you know, a lot of different things. So now, at this point, normally what we would do is we would do some relaxation and we would see if we can get you to have your hand temperature go up. So, I mean, it's, the setting is a little bit difficult for it. But just, um, have you ever done diaphragmatic breathing? Okay, so what I want you to do is just have your shoulders relaxed. And um, you're just going to breathe like this where when you, you First, blow all the air out. So you're just gonna, then your stomach should come in. And then when you breathe in, your stomach should come out, right? Just keep your shoulders relaxed, and then you should feel the movement here, all right? And just easy, not, not a whole lot of effort. We just want it to be easy. You just breathe nice and slow, and just do that for a minute or so. same person that you would have been trying to calm down and they don't believe what you're telling them works, if you can show them on a screen that something in their body is actually changing, now they start to believe you and they'll be more likely to do those things that you're trying to teach them to do. So he's right back where he was. You speak so well, Miss, and uh, mindfulness because yeah. reading is a huge part of that. Yeah. And this gives physical proof right. that right. the techniques would work. That's the thing. And, and see, you know, a lot of people, not just our people, a lot of people, just think a lot of this stuff is weird and, you know, it's not for me, you know, I'm, you know, I have to have something concrete, you know, and this gives them that. You know, so, so it's a way, and, and they're actually, to a certain degree, they're learning from themselves. It's not you just talking and telling them and telling them and telling them. They, they're working and they're, they're making progress on their own. You're helping them, but they're able to do a lot of it themselves. Now he's actually 
further on than he was when he started. So that was actually complete recovery, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Okay. That's it. She said, man, what? What? said, how do y'all do you know y'all don't know that? He's like, man, Santa's like, oh, wait, you? I was like, can I, can I do something else? I'm not good at math. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like um, if we look at the whole record of what he did. Is biofeedback permissible in court? What's that? Is bio <laughs> I'm just asking well, because sometimes the records get subpoenaed. It um is it? People have used it in court in court for for certain things, especially with EEG. Like for instance, this doctor that's doing the uh, the work with phobias. He's done work with um, some pretty interesting cases with, with biofeedback showing, you know, making a case as far as the person's mental state and things like that with, with, uh, with biofeedback. Interesting. So would you submit this, your reports, to insurance companies or? Yeah, okay. yeah. And Dr. Lewis says she's a so I'll bring that um, display up in a minute. So with skin conductance, now this is one that we're measuring sweat activity. And we're measuring conductance, which, um, I'll just show you this. So just um, hold both ends of it. <laughs> so that's an example of conductance, right? So the the signal is passing from one hand to the other because of the electrical signal. I actually got I picked that up at Walmart when I was with my wife shopping, you know, and I wander off into the toy section and I got that. And you could even do this. If you hold it with one hand and, and let her hold it with the other hand. Y'all aren't passing any signals. That hold it, hold it, hold that you just hold it. See? <laughs> so you're you're actually um, one circuit, right? But if you um, if you try to do it with her, it's not a complete circuit, right? So I bought it at Walmart. See, so it works because you're continuous. So basically what it's doing is, is we have electricity in our bodies, right? And that's conductive and it's passing the signal from one end through the other end. So what happens with conductance is if there's more sweat, then the conductance is higher. Less sweat is lower. So for instance, like if you're in a bathtub, right, you don't want somebody to throw a hair dryer in there that's running because the water is conductive and it will electrocute you, right? Yeah. So with these sensors, when we have um, we have these on your fingers, we've got two of these. So we have one on one finger, and we have one the other one on another finger. And so it's a similar thing like that, where a signal is being passed from one to the other. On the and same On the same hand. And if there's more sweat, the reading is higher. Less sweat, the reading is lower. So that's how we measure the, uh, the skin conduct. It's based on sweat, and this is uh, showing sympathetic reaction. It reacts to emotional reactivity and also a startle response. So if you heard a loud noise, you would tend to get a reaction. But then, again, that's part of uh, built into our system. You hear a loud noise, you want to see, okay, is this dangerous? Do I have to run? Do I have to, you know, what do I have to do? <laughs> you know. Uh, if it's just you know a chair fell over and there's no big deal, then your system should go back to normal. But you know if we see that we're under attack or something, then we gotta get out of here. <laughs> you know, um, so then your body should continue to react until we're safe, right? So another thing that to, uh, about skin conductance to to think about is that with skin conductance in particular, it's not always bad if it goes up. So like if you laugh it would go up because there's like an emotional response there. Or if let's say, you know, uh, 
a friend or a family member that you like, you know, walks into the room and you didn't expect it, you're happy to see them, you would see a reaction from that. Um, so it's not always bad, but your body wants to be in this sort of balanced state. So even for something positive, it doesn't want to be way over here too long. So we probably all had this, the uh, experience where somebody was making us laugh too much, and you're like, you know, come on, stop, you know, because after a while, it's uncomfortable, you know, we like to laugh, but we don't laugh for a half hour, you know, that would be not good, so, um, so the body still wants to come back even from something nice, all right, so with this, we don't have to do skin prep, we put the two sensors on the fingers, we might use a little bit of this conductive cream, it's sort of like lotion with a little bit of salt in it, basically. Um, if someone has like really dry skin, it's helpful to pick the signal up. And so the goal is usually to bring the level down. And then also, if there's an increase, we want to be able to bring it back down to what we would call baseline. And very useful working with anxiety, emotional issues, and things like that. We also, I've used it with um, relationship types of uh, work. And it, it's very interesting to, to use it in that way. You see, people see things that they would normally not see. Who's next? You want to come back up? I, 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 I thought it was stupid. No, I just like it. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll use the same hand again. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this on your fingers and just give me that one. Okay. Okay, so we put these on. We don't want them to be too tight, but we don't want them to be sliding around either. So just let me know if that's okay. How's that feel? You're from Houston? Oh, okay. I'm going to go to Soyville. I'm going to go to Walmart. Who's been a while? Yeah, I've, just, um, I've never been to Essence. Yeah, I'm not going to make it this summer, but hopefully soon. <laughs> I've been there for a couple of conferences. Interesting place. It's nice. Okay, so now we got the skin conductance. And so remember, lower means more calm, higher means more reaction. So with this one, if we start to get above six, then I'm saying, you know, that's showing some reaction that I probably want to work on. Um, considering the, the situation here, where he's in front of everybody and all, and we already worked him up, so, you know, it's not surprising that would be it. There, you know, at that level. Usually I'm working to get it to, to below two eventually, if I'm working with somebody over time. So. I'm waiting for it to, to calm down. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him relax I'm for trying, a minute. I'm we'll, we'll let him relax for a minute. Yeah, He's not going to ask you any sensitive Sometimes when you get it to come down, like, yeah, I got it down, and then it goes back up, you know. So when you have clients who you've trained, you know, they have their peak levels and they've learned to kind of normalize, how do you, what tools do you Take them, do you send them out with? Do you have like, okay, this kind of monitor or watch or something so that you can kind of start regulating? Yeah, you would, there are tools that you can have them use to, to go out and, and practice, mm -hmm. but you can also just even, even without two actual measurement tools, you can have them practice the same type of relaxation exercises that they did when they had the feedback in the office. But like, for instance, when he was doing the breathing, and it was effective in getting the hand temperature to go up. So if he does that same breathing, you know, practicing that, 
even without the feedback, it, this, the effect should still be the same. So, um, and, and if you have, you know, tools that you can have in practice with, that's even better. But the, the main thing is to get them to, with the feedback, feel what it feels like internally. So when, for instance, when, uh, even with temperature, if I don't have anything to send them out with, I, I might even just have to tell them, you know, just touch your hand against your neck and see what it feels like. If your hand feels cold against your neck, then you know your hands are cold. But if it feels about the same, then your hands are probably warm. It's not exact, but it's something, you know. And if you feel like your hands are cold or you feel stressed, then you might do that same breathing that you know increased your hand temperature. Or you might do progressive muscle relaxation exercises if you had if your problem was muscle tension. But there are different devices that you can have people go home with. Like the, the cards that I showed you, those are some other devices that uh, will connect either to a PC or to a tablet or a smartphone. So there's some that will measure like heart rate variability, which we didn't get to yet, uh, skin temperature, skin conductance, and those range anywhere from uh, about 100 to 300. This registered for two weeks. Like the person in the business. Tell the difference in their body and be able to do it wherever they are. Yeah, it takes a while usually. So what we normally <laughs> would have is people come in the office uh, one to two times a week, you know, depending on setting and insurance and if they're paying out of pocket or if it's a program where it's covered within, you know, a fee or whatever. Um, to, to have people come in one to two times a week is, is pretty ideal. And you want them to do that for a series of sessions, maybe 12 sessions, and then after that, you would want them to start to be able to do it on their own. Uh, for some things, like especially like with the neurofeedback, for things like attention deficit, um, you might need more sessions. Like for neurofeedback, a lot of times you might need even 40 sessions. Uh, but you know, once you get through that, the results tend to, to last. Doing pretty good. <laughs> Still trying to bring it down. To, let me let you stop. <laughs> I think this would be something that, that definitely you can work with. You know, you, you would have some some uh, some work you could do there, and it, it would probably be pretty interesting to you to be able to get it down to those levels and see what it feels like internally when you do this versus you know when it's hot. <laughs> What was the lowest, I wasn't watching, what was the lowest you brought it to? 480. Yeah. Okay, that's, hey, it's the worst time doing this. That's, that's not bad. And what was the goal on that? I had, well, the, the eventual goal would be two. Oh, okay. But very often, you're not going to get that. Even in the first session, if nobody else was here but me and him, and he was in a more relaxed chair and all of that, even then, it may take a few sessions to be able to reach that goal. And remember, wherever we are right now, we probably, that's, what our normal is, you know. So it, we may be trying to change what's normal for them, and it may take a while to do that. Just like if you start exercising, you know, you say, okay, I'm gonna run two miles today. You get, you get like one block, and you're like, <laughs> you know, it may take a while before you can work your way up to doing that. And once you do, it's like no problem. Like for me, a lot of times when I hook myself up, it's hard for me to get above two now. You know, because I've done it so many times, and, and it's just normal for me to be lower now. So, not that I don't get there, you know. Sometimes, I know some people that can get me there. <laughs> so now we look at heart rate and heart rate variability. And so this is autonomic nervous system, and it's both sympathetic and parasympathetic. And we use it for things like anxiety, emotional issues. Um, with this one, we have what's called a photoplethysmograph sensor. And yeah. usually, I don't say that word after lunch. <laughs> I, I usually <laughs> will we'll just say it in the morning, and that's it. Photoplethysmograph. It basically, it, it means it's a light sensor. Is there a nickname for that? <laughs> Can I call it the photo P? <laughs> yeah. We call it PPG. OK, there you go. Um, <laughs> you just call it a heart rate sensor. Okay. You know. So basically, the reason why they call it that is because it, it works with light. Uh -huh. So it, it has two windows there, and one shines light into the skin, and the other one measures how that light comes back. Okay. So based on that, 
because the blood is flowing through and it's pulsing and so on, it's able to pick up that information to, to detect heart rate. And um, so that's one sensor that we use for that. The other type of sensor that we would use for measuring heart rate would be an EKG. Okay. So I usually use this sensor just because it's easier to just put it on the finger. Uh, there's another type that, that works with um, one of those devices. Th these are more um, geared to be like anybody could order them. It doesn't have to be a healthcare professional, so you can use them at home. Uh, a lot of professionals do use them in the office, though. And this would just plug into a USB, and it has a sensor, the same type of sensor, but it, it clips onto the earlobe. Okay, so the goal is to decrease the average heart rate. You know, you're going to tend to have a higher heart rate if you're more anxious, stressed. And then also to increase what we call the heart rate variability and what we call co uh, coherence, which has to do with how smoothly the heart is functioning. So you can have your heart beating at 70 beats a minute, but the, the pattern could be kind of erratic, and that's not as good. Or if you just have your heartbeat beating at 70 and not changing at all, which that wouldn't happen, but it's, it's, that wouldn't be good. You want it to be varying. And in fact, it's better if it's kind of following your breathing. So if you inhale, your heart should speed up, and exhale, it should slow down. It should have a nice pattern like that, which we'll hopefully see. And this is an example of a more erratic heart pattern, and then this is more of a smooth pattern where it's increasing, decreasing, pretty smoothly. So you'd probably rather have this than this. You know? And you could, you know, sometimes you can almost, I know I can, like feel like when I'm upset. It's like you, you just don't even feel right internally, you know. And so that's some of why you feel like that because your physiology is kind of off. And so if you are able to calm things down, then it's, it's uh, a better balance. So then I'm going to go through the respiration before I do the, the demonstration for this part because I'm going to show the heart rate and respiration together. So respiration, it, we look at two things. One is how fast the person is breathing and how deep they're breathing. And a lot of times you can teach someone relax, breathing for relaxation and they're just not doing it right. You know, so you tell them to take a deep breath and they say, <laughs> and they say, no, you, I want you to keep your shoulders relaxed and breathe down here. And they say, okay. <laughs> and they keep doing the same thing, you know. But the instrument will show them, you know, because they keep saying, I am, I am. And they're not, you know. But rather than me keep saying, you're not doing it right, look at the screen, and the screen will show you if you're doing it right. And so it's, it's helpful with that, and you can see some of the things that we've been using for. 